myself Dr. Chitraniva Datta from Department of Chemistry of NIT Agartala is going to present a topic before you named Bioinorganic Chemistry. This topic is an interdisciplinary topic. Bioinorganic Chemistry or Inorganic Biochemistry is a terminology adopted to focus on the studies of biological roles of inorganic elements, the metals in particular. If we see there are many important inorganic elements which has biological relevance in the living systems. For example, sodium, potassium which is very important for nerve signaling purpose, calcium, magnesium used for proper functioning of bones, teeth, vitamin B12 whose metal center is cobalt very important or whose deficiency creates anemia in body then copper, zinc, all these are bio-relevant metal element, metals. Now the most important one is iron which is present in hemoglobin which is the dioxygen carrier also present in myoglobin which is dioxygen storage of living system. Iron present in cytochromes are electron carrier proteins, ferritoxins are also electron carrier proteins. So if I discuss some role of metals in details, here some roles of metals are mentioned in this slide which includes the nerve signals and impulses by sodium potassium ion. The balance of sodium potassium ion in a cell is very important for muscle contraction and proper signaling of the nerve cells. Calcium magnesium provides strength and rigidity to bones and teeth. Iron ion present in hemoglobin, myoglobin, cytochromes are very important metallobiomolecules. Then the zinc present in carbonic anhydrase, carboxypeptidase are very important enzymes. So these are few functions I have mentioned in this slide played by the bio-relevant metals. Now the biomolecules with Fe center, here are biomolecules which includes iron metal atom as the center that is hemoglobin, myoglobin which plays a central ro role in almost all living cells. Then electron transfer proteins which are iron sulfur clusters. Here from the picture we can see that iron sulfur clusters are actually non-heme iron proteins no heme unit is present in this iron sulfur clusters. Cytochromes are again one type of heme proteins which serve as redox catalysts. So metal ion complexes are used in humans for the transport and storage of oxygen as well as elect they can also act as electron transfer agents as catalysts as well as drugs. This is a protoporphyrin 9 and heme unit. The, it is a macrocyclic ligand which contains 4 nitrogen atoms attached with a 4 pyrrole rings linked by methane bridges. So 15 different ways the substituents can arrange around the porphyrin ligand and only one isomer protoporphyrin 9 is found in the living systems 
and porphyrins are planar and aromatic in nature. Porphyrins with different metals at its center are a common prosthetic group in bioinorganic chemistry as we can see in this slide mentioned as cytochrome C, vitamin B12, hemocyanin, myoglobin, chlorophyll, these all metallobiomolecules include porphyrins as the macrocyclic ligand. Porphyrins are tightly bound cofactors and this cofactor is a non-protein chemical compound that is bound to a protein and is required for the protein's biological activity. Now the protein structure can be of four types. Basically proteins are formed by condensation of amino acids that is by release of water amino acids joined through peptide linkage to form a protein molecule. That structure may be of primary type, secondary type, tertiary or quaternary structure. So the linkage between the protein structure creates different type of protein structure. Now in hemoglobin, if we see the detailed structure of hemoglobin which includes the attachment of ferrous ion with the 4 nitrogen of a porphyrin ring and if we look into the structure the porphyrin ring consists of the pyrrol rings, vinyl chains, methyl groups and propionate ligands as the substituents and the hemoglobin is a quaternary protein structure. So each subunit of hemoglobin here I want to mention one point is that hemoglobin is a tetramer. Basically hemoglobin is encapsulated in a hydrophobic protein po pocket arranged in a tetrahedral manner with alpha to beta to structure. These alpha to beta to chains are coiled protein chains. So each subunit of hemoglobin from the picture it is clear that each hemoglobin contains four heme unit. So each he, he subunit of hemoglobin contains one globin chain and one heme group with a central ferrous ion. So one heme can bind with one oxygen molecule and four heme unit binds with four oxygen molecule. Now the ferrous ion which is coordinated to four nitrogen atoms in the porphyrin plane of the heme. The fifth position is attached with the imidazole nitrogen of histidine residue of the protein chain. And the sixth position that is the position trans to the ferrous nitrogen bond, the sixth position is free it may be attached with the water molecule in deoxyhemoglobin and with oxygen molecule in oxyhemoglobin. Now in this structure that is the structure with proximal and distal histidyl residue of globin chain which I have shown here I want to mention one point that one histidine residue is attached through imidazole nitrogen with the ferrous ion in the heme unit and there is another distal histidine residue of the globin chain that is the protein chain which is just interacted with the 
oxygen molecule of the oxyhemoglobin through hydrogen bonding or through weak any or through any weak interactions and it plays a very important role in discriminating property of hemoglobin with oxygen and carbon monoxide which I will discuss in my later slides. Myoglobin which is used for dioxygen storage in muscles also has the similar structure like hemoglobin just the difference is myoglobin is a monomer mono, monomeric molecule whereas hemoglobin is a tetrameric molecule. In myoglobin also we find that ferrous ion is attached with the four nitrogen atoms of the porphyrin ring and the fifth position attached with the histidine residue and the sixth position free to attach with the dioxygen plus the proximal and distal histidine unit also plays an important role in myoglobin molecule. Now if we see the binding mode of dioxygen, biologically the possible modes of binding of dioxygen can be through a linear mode, can be in perpendicular fashion or in bent fashion. Now from different experimental investigation, especially spectroscopic investigation, it has been found that the stretching band of oxygen oxygen of the oxyhemoglobin is around 1107 centimeter inverse which is close to the stretching band of superoxide ion which suggests that the formation of an adduct Fe3 plus O2 minus in oxyhemoglobin as well as in oxymyoglobin and the magnetic coupling between the Fe3 plus and O2 minus ion leads to diamagnetic nature of hemoglobin. There is an additional support from distal histidine which I have mentioned in my earlier slide. The distal histidine also through hydrogen bond as well as through weak interaction supports the superoxide ion as well as the bent formation or bent binding mode of dioxygen with the ferrous ion and also the bond angle of iron oxygen oxygen which is almost equal to 120 degree supports the bent binding mode of oxygen with the ferrous ion in oxyhemoglobin and in oxymyoglobin. Now if we look into the electronic transition in oxyhemoglobin and the molecular orbital diagram we find that the red color of the hemoglobin arises from the differences between the energy levels of the d orbitals around the ferrous ion as well as the red color of the hemoglobin which is evidenced from the absorption spectra can also be from the charge transfer electronic transition from stable pi and low lying pi star orbitals and the effective delocalization around the planar porphyrin ring also supports the red color of hemoglobin. Now what does the structurally change occurs during oxygenation of hemoglobin and myoglobin? If 
if we look into the structure we see that the ferrous ion in deoxyhemoglobin as well as in myoglobin is in high spin state the radius of high spin ferrous ion is not fit to sit into the porphyrin plane so in deoxyhemoglobin ferrous ion is out of the plane of the porphyrin ring now when the dioxygen is attached with the ferrous ion then the high spin state of ferrous ion gets immediately changed to low spin state and this leads to the shrinkage of radius of the ferrous ion and helps the ferrous ion to fit into the porphyrin cavity and in this mechanism a trigger is being felt due to which there a conformational change is being supported throughout the entire globin chain and this conformational change brings out the stability of the oxyhemoglobin structure and the distal histidine residue which is attached with the globin chain also makes enable to bind the oxygen in a bent fashion and it does not support the binding of carbon monoxide with hemoglobin in a linear fashion and this is very much important for hemoglobin or myoglobin to discriminate the binding of oxygen and co because if co binds with the hemoglobin then carbino hemoglobin is formed which is very much toxic for living system now for efficient oxygen carrier just binding oxygen is not sufficient rather a dioxygen carrier should bind oxygen as well as release dioxygen at a rapid rate so hemoglobin is a tetramer molecule as i have mentioned earlier which contains four heme units in in a single hemoglobin molecule so when one heme unit gets attached with the dioxygen molecule it triggers the other heme units to get attached with the dioxygen molecule so when heme unit is in deoxygenated form it is in tensed state or t state either none one two three or all four sub units of heme will get oxygenated and this oxygen binding triggers the conformational change in the entire globin unit which synergizes or which helps the other sub unit to bind with the oxygen so in tetrameric hemoglobin binding of first oxygen molecule to one sub unit brings about a conformational or structural change which in turn positively influences the binding of the remaining sub units to oxygen so in this process entire or all the four sub units of hemoglobin gets oxygenated which is known as cooperative binding now what is the role of globin chain the heme units are encapsulated in a hydrophobic water pocket so this globin chain has a vital role free heme that is without globin chain 
can easily get oxidized to ferric iron as well as can easily form a dimer in presence of oxygen. But in case of hemoglobin where the globin chain is present, it prevents the irreversible oxidation by exerting steric congestion to the heme unit and does not allow the heme unit to react with the oxodimer of heme unit to form a permanent oxidized form of heme that is the hematin. So hematin which is easily formed in case of free heme without globin chain can be restricted by the presence of globin chain in hemoglobin present in our living system. So this is how the prosthetic unit part of a metalloprotein hemoglobin perform its an important function. So this is the journey of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin a metallobiomolecule takes up oxygen from lungs, get ox dioxygenated and carry the oxygen to the muscles, release the oxygen to myoglobin where oxygen is stored for different metabolic reactions and the deoxyhemoglobin carries the carbon dioxide from the muscles tissues through its amino acid residues or the protein chain and come back to the lungs to release carbon dioxide. So this is how hemoglobin carries out its journey in the living system. These are the books to be followed for this course or for, to for the topic bioinorganic chemistry that is by Bartini Gray Lippert, bioinorganic chemistry by Dubert Stryer, bioinorganic chemistry by A. L. Leninger, bioinorganic chemistry by Harper. Thank you.